Okay, so you know that feeling on Christmas morning? That's how I feel right now. The overwhelming majority of people commented in my last video that they wanted to see something on the Apple AR kit. I had no plans on doing this whatsoever because I hate doing things that are not cross-platform. But I tried it and I was sold immediately. The tracking is amazing. If you don't already have an iPhone, you should probably get one. So today we're gonna go through just getting the Apple AR kits sample scene uh, set up and we're gonna make it so you can place a zombie on the ground. We're gonna add a couple buttons so you can scale it up and down and make it walk. So there are a couple prerequisites for this video. You will need the very latest Xcode, which is Xcode 9 beta. You will need iOS 11 beta installed on your phone and you need the very latest Unity, which is Unity 5.6.1 patch one and you will need the Apple AR Kit Unity package. I'll put links to where you can download all this stuff in the description below. So once you have all that stuff ready, let's get started. Okay, so number one, open up uh, the very latest Unity. Create a new project and let's just call it uh, AR Apple. Okay, first go to File, Build Settings and switch your platform to iOS. Drag in the uh, AR Kit uh, plugin. Hit Import. Now go to the Unity AR Kit scene and open that up. First, let's download our zombie. So go to the asset store and type in zombie uh, free walk. Should be this one right here. So download and import this zombie. Okay, go back to the scene and we're going to turn off um, AR kit control, generate planes and point cloud particle example. So uncheck those, make sure they're grayed out. The only thing we should have left is uh, AR camera manager, hit cube parent, camera parent. Uh, we're gonna delete random cube. And then under uh, hit cube parent, uh, delete this hit cube here. Go into the zombie folder, find the zombie walk model, and drag that as a child to the hit cube parent. While we're here, let's make sure everything is zeroed out. Okay, so go to the zombie walk and let's remove this animator component and we're going to add an animation component. Go to the uh, zombie model down here and find the animation, or no, you know what? First of all, click on this zombie model, go to rig and animation type, set that to legacy, hit apply. And then go to the zombie walk game object and drag in the zombie walk animation here. Uncheck play automatically. All right, now we're gonna add a couple things to this zombie component. So number one, let's add AR hit test example. And it's looking for a transform, that's gonna be the hit cube parent. And then add another component, and let's uh, we're gonna add a C sharp script, C sharp, excuse me, C sharp script called Zombie Control. Create an ad, and then double click this to open it up. And we're gonna need to do a couple things in here. Also, go back to the Unity AR hit test example and double click this as well. So first of all, in Zombie Control, we need uh, a reference to our animation component so we can play it. So let's go private animation and just call it animation. And then inside the start function, uh, let's go animation equals get component and let's get the animation component. Oops, that's not what I want. And then we're gonna make a function called walk and this is what's gonna get called when we press our uh, walk button. So we go public void walk And then first let's check uh, if the animation is not playing. So if the animation is not playing, we want to play the animation. Or else we want to stop the animation. Now, whenever the zombie's walking, we actually want it to move as well. So in the update function, oh, you know what? First, we need to set a flag for, uh, let's call it should move. And then inside the update function, if should move is true, we wanna move the zombie forward. So we're going to go transform.translate and pass in vector3.forward. Multiply that by time.delta time. And then multiply that by the scale because we want it to actually uh, move faster as the scale gets bigger. So transform.localScale. And then I found this value to be pretty good. We're going to multiply it by 0.05f. Oh, you know what? Delete those uh, exclamation or delete those parentheses there. So now, if the animation is playing, we're going to set uh, should move to true. 
And then if it's not pulling, we're going to set it to false. So this should take care of our zombie actually walking. Now, we're also going to have a button to make the zombie uh, look at the camera. That way we can kind of control the direction in which it walks a little bit. So let's go public void and let's call it look at. And then whenever this button is pressed, uh, we're going to make the zombie look at the camera. So transform dot look at and then pass in the uh, main camera's transform. What am I doing? And then we don't want it to actually, uh, we don't want its rotation to change about the X or the Z. So we're just going to uh, zero that out now. So transform.euler angles equals a new vector three. And just zero out the Z or the X and the Z only. All right, so that should be our look at function. Now, last thing we need to do is we're going to set two buttons. Uh, one to make it bigger and one to make the zombie smaller. So let's go public void bigger. And we're just going to um, increase the scale by one every time the button is pressed. So that takes care of bigger. Now let's do the same thing for smaller, except for we want to subtract one. And actually, I got into this situation where sometimes I'd make it too small and it would disappear off the screen. So um, basically, let's just make a check for that. So uh, let's only transform the local scale if, let's see, transform.localScale.x is greater than 1. That way we can't make it disappear. Now, the last thing with uh, basically scripting that we have to do is in Unity AR uh, hit test example, you'll see in the update function that uh, it's checking for touch in order to, uh, whenever you touch on the screen, basically, it'll transform that uh, screen point touch to a world point co world point coordinate and that's where like the zombie will go based on your based on your touch the only problem with this is if we put UI buttons in um, basically every time we press a UI button it's also going to register the touch here so we need to prevent that so go to uh, up here let's add um, a using directive for uh, unity engine dot event system I think event systems there we go and then inside this check here, let's go and uh, let's see, event system dot current dot is pointer over game object, pass in zero. So basically, we're only going to continue here if the uh, pointer is not over a game object. So if it's over a game object like uh, one of our UI buttons, then we will not continue, which is what we want. The other thing is that uh, since we're going to allow the zombie to move around, every time you touch the screen, uh, we actually need to reset the position of the zombie. Well, reset its local position to 0, 0, 0. So let's go transform.localPosition equals vector3.0. And that should be the last bit of scripting that we need to do. So now let's add our buttons and we should be ready to build out. So right click in the hierarchy here, click uh, UI button, change its anchor position to bottom left. And on your canvas, let's go, uh, instead of constant pixel size, go to scale with screen size. And then on your button, just kind of scale this, uh, make it a little bit bigger and wider. That looks about good. For the text, let's make this our look at button. So just increase the font size. And then duplicate this. Move this over to the bottom right corner, change its uh, anchor point. And let's make this our walk button. Duplicate this again, bring it towards the middle. And we're gonna scale this, this one down, make this fairly small. This is going to be our plus button. Oh, you know what? If it's starting to disappear, change that horizontal overflow and vertical overflow, both to over, overflow. And then we can make this button bigger. And then let's duplicate this. Move this over. And this will be our negative button. So save the scene. And now we just have to add our functions. So the first button is our look at button. So go to, let's see, on click and find the zombie game object 
just type in Z, make it easier. Find the zombie game object, go to zombie control, and choose the look at function. Second button is our walk button, so let's do the same thing. Find the zombie, zombie control, and find the walk function. This third button here is going to be our plus button, so we need to find the bigger function on the zombie and zombie control. Bigger. And then lastly, let's find the smaller function. All right, so this looks pretty good. We actually should be ready to build out. Let's just press play make sure we don't have any errors. Unfortunately, you can't test this in the editor because this AR kit uses all kind of sensor fusion and stuff which we don't have on our computer. So yeah, okay, everything looks all right. Got our zombie there. Okay, let's build this out and see what happens. So go to player settings, and number one, you have to enter in a bundle identifier. So com dot, uh, go your name, dot whatever the app name is apple ar test one and then under camera usage description just put put any string in here but i'm going to go augmented reality okay so we got all that stuff let's click build put it on our desktop ios test build okay so once that's built out let's open it up in xcode so we can close out of all this stuff and here's our test build here. So let's go uh, open up Xcode 9 beta and open a project and then find that, uh, what was it called? iOS test build. Open that in Xcode. And then click on this main, main project here. Change uh, to your personal team. All right, so plug in your phone, choose it up here, and click play, and let's see if this works. All right, so if you touch on the screen, you should be able to place the zombie wherever you want. You can press the plus button, make them bigger, make them smaller. If you press look at, he'll look at your camera. And if you press walk, he will walk towards the camera. All right, so that's it. That's all I got. Hopefully this video helped you out. Uh, definitely let me know in the comments what you guys want to see in the next video. And that's it. Good night.